Okay, I'd like, to, I'd like to call the City Council meeting to order for May 20th, 2021, roll call. Alderman Woods. Alderman Smarski. <coughs> Where'd you go? Where's my here? They're both downstairs. Excuse me. Huh? They're both downstairs at the door. Someone may want to get Continue. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Forget, forget uh, the mayor fast forwards the clock. Continue? Yes. Okay. No. All right, Alderman Sorrentino. Alderman Messina. Here. Alderman Jacob. Here. Alderman Curielli. Here. Alderman Catalano. Here. Alderman Ames. Here. Yeah, Mayor okay. Police. Here. I declare a quorum present. Please stand, join the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Let the minutes reflect that Alderman Woods and Sismarski are here. First, I need a motion to approve the minutes of May 6, 2021. Do I have so a motion? Move. Do I have a second? Second. Mike, go. Two mics, okay. Two mics. Okay. Any comments, corrections, questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That passes. Do any citizens wish to be heard on matters not listed on the agenda? Okay, I have no written communique. Under Mayor's report, first item of proclamation supporting the restoration of the local government distributive fund. Whereas municipalities across the state of Illinois provide essential services to their residents that include public safety, support, transportation, and storm and wastewater infrastructure and community health services, along with many others. And whereas the state of Illinois has maintained a long held agreement with municipalities to support and invest in these local services through the local government distributive fund, LGDF, which includes the collection and distribution of tax revenues on behalf of municipalities. And whereas since the state income tax was adopted in 1969, State government has shared a percentage of total income tax collections through the LGDF with municipalities on a per capita basis in lieu of a local income tax. And whereas these shared revenues had been significantly reduced by the state since 2011 from 10% to 6.06%. And whereas municipalities depend on LGDF dollars, which, cannot, which can account for between 10 and 20% of municipalities operating budget to lessen the burden on taxpayers and reduce the reliance on property taxes. Whereas Governor J.B. Pritzker has proposed that the fiscal year 2022 state budget include a further 10% reduction in the amount of LGDF revenue distributed to local governments. And whereas this revenue reduction has been proposed at a time when municipalities are continuing to spend additional funds on COVID-19 emergency response. And whereas in addition to LGDF cuts over the years, the state has also reduced municipalities share of the per personal property replacement tax and increased sales tax collection fees, while cities and villages have had to fu fund skyrocketing pension costs, which account for substantial budget increases each year. <coughs> whereas those municipalities with fewer revenue sources such as retail businesses with higher equalized assessed values on property suffer the most and will be forced to explore increasing property taxes or cutting services amid further LGDF reductions. Now, therefore, I, Anunziata Police, Mayor of the City of Wooddale, do hereby urge the General Assembly and the Governor to restore LGDF payments to the promised 10% rate so municipalities across Illinois may provide basic levels of service and lessen the reliance on property taxes. Next, committee appointments. I'm gonna read them all and then we'll ask for one motion, unless somebody has objections. Okay. 
First, Building Code Board of Appeals, appointment of Bob Olson for a five-year term commencing on May 20th, 2021 and expiring on April 30th, 2026. Community Development Commission, reappointment of Richard Peterson for a two-year term commencing on May 20th, 2021, expiring on April 30th, 2023. Reappointment of Teresa A. Zatko for a two-year term commencing on May 20th, 2021 and expiring on April 30th, 2023. Appointment of Jay Babowitz for a two-year term commencing on May 20th, 2021 and expiring on April 30th, 2023. Streetscape and Economic Enhancement Committee, reappointment of Michael D. Malone for a two-year term commencing on May 20th, 2021 and expiring on April 30th, 2023. Appointment of Sheswat P. Boxy for two-year term commencing on May 20th, 2021 and expiring on April 30th, 2023. Wooddale for a Greener Tomorrow Committee, reappointment of Lynn Curiali for a two-year term commencing on May 20th, 2021, expiring on May on April 30th, sorry, 2023. Appointment of George Poro for a two-year term commencing on May 20th, 2021, and expiring on April 30th, 2023. And Mr. Poro is here this evening. Yeah. Appointment of Zakir Karashi for a one-year term commencing on May 20th, 2021, and expiring April 30th, 2022. It's a one year because this, there was, he's fulfilling a one year, uh, an expired term of someone else. Stormwater Subcommittee of the Wooddale for a Greener Tomorrow. Reappointment of Steve Critch for a two year term commencing on May 20th, 2021 and expiring April 30th, 2023. Reappointment of Dolores Kopp for a two year term commencing on May 20th, 2021 and expiring on April 30th, 2023. Reappointment of Warren R. Wozak for a two-year term commencing on May 20th, 2021 and expiring on April 30th, 2023. Appointment of Lynn Curial for a one-year term commencing on May 20th, 2021 and expiring April 30th, 2022. Board and of Police and Fire Commissioners, reappointment of Joseph C. Menard for a three-year term commencing on May 20th, 2021, expiring April 30th, 2024. Police Pension Board, reappointment of Sandra L. Porch. Two-year term commencing on May 20th, 2021, and expiring on April 30th, 2023. Citizens Involvement Committee, reappointment of Deborah Andonopoulos for a two-year term commencing on May 20th, expiring on April 30th, 2023. Reappointment of Paula Mazzolotti for a two-year term commencing on May 20th, 2021, and expiring April 30th, 2023. Reappointment of Ryan Sowers for a two-year term commencing on May 20th, 2021, and expiring April 30th, 2023. Reappointment of Patty Scott for a two-year term commencing on May 20th, 2021, and expiring on April 30th, 2023. Next, reappointment of Anna Sostek for a two-year term commencing on May 20th, 2021, expiring April 30th, 2023. Reappointment of Edna Manganiello for a two-year term commencing on May 20th, 2021, and expiring April 30th, 2023. Reappointment of Isaac Capistran for a two-year term commencing on May 20th, 2021, and expiring April 30th, 2023. Appointment of Blanca Cruz for a two-year term commencing on May 20th, 2021 and expiring April 30th, 2023. Appointment of John Abate for a two-year term commencing on May 20th, 2021 and expiring on April 30th, 2023. Do I have a motion? It's motion made. Do I have a second? Second. second. Okay. Uh, roll call, please. Alderman Woods. Yes. Alderman Sosmarski? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Curielli? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Caves? Yes. And that passes. And thank you to all those uh, residents that are volunteering and, and the, <coughs> the few that uh, decided to move on. Thank you for their service. Next, Mr. Murma, City Manager's Report. Uh, one item this evening, uh, the City of Wooddale has launched its new online portal, my.wooddale.com, 
which can be accessed by citizens at any time. Residents <coughs> and contractors can utilize the portal to apply for permits now, any licenses, track application status, submit plans, check and inspection status, and pay fees online. Wooddale is pleased to present this system in an effort to streamline processes and allow the city to better serve its constituents. Um, this has been a part of a multi-year ERP uh, process and uh, staff would just like to uh, appreciate or thank the council for obviously funding it and all of the staff time that went into this. It was many, 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 many hours. Um, it was a little longer than the mayor's report that he just uh, read off. Um, it was a lot of hard work and it's still going. Um, so hopefully the residents uh, appreciate it and, and utilize the new tool. Uh, I think there's a question. Yeah, just a quick question on something else. With, with the mandate on the masks now, what, what is the rule in town here? Just so residents know, because I know we, we don't yeah, have to as, wear them As in with town. the beginning of the pandemic, Wooddale always follows the DuPage County guidelines, the state of Illinois guidelines, and the CDC guidelines. So we link to all those on our website uh, on an ongoing basis. So we don't have our own set of regulations. We follow those regulations. That concludes my report. Okay. All right, thank you. Next, we have four items on the consent agenda. If no objections, I'll need a motion. I make a motion to approve. Second. Do we have any objections before I go on? All right, we have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Alderman Woods? Yes. Alderman Sismarski? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Curielli? Yes. Yes. Alderman Ames? Yes. Okay, and that passes now. I need a motion to approve the items on the agenda. Item number one, a resolution authorizing the City of Wooddale to enter into an agreement for services from the CTS group. Item number two, a resolution approving an agreement between the City of Wooddale and RJN group for the fiscal year 2022 infiltration and inflow project in an amount not to exceed 119000 $890. Item number three, a resolution approving an agreement between the City of Wooddale and Concentric <coughs> Integration for SCADA support services for fiscal year 2022, an amount not to exceed $23,820. Item number four, a resolution approving an agreement between the City of Wooddale and Denler Incorporated for the pavement crack ceiling program in an amount <coughs> not to exceed 27,500, do I have a motion? Make that motion. Second. Okay, roll call please. Alderman Woods? Yes. Alderman Sismarski? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman um, Curielli? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. And Alderman Ames? <coughs> yes. Okay, and that passes. Next, under committee chairman reports, planning and zoning, Alderman Woods, and for your item, Alderman Woods, we have uh, some gentlemen here that would like to speak. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's Mr. John Stimson and Rob DeGaria. Good evening. Thank you guys very much for having us and giving us the opportunity to speak. Um, we had our opportunity to appear before CDC as well as PZB, and uh, we, we greatly appreciate the opportunity. COVID's kind of limited the number of people attendance and the time we've had to interact. Uh, we are here, I'm currently here today on behalf of the property owner at 950 North Route 83. Uh, it's in your northeastern most portion of the city. Um, it's on the south side of the highway. Um, we are proposing a text amendment to the sign code here. Um, and I'm going to let my counterpart colleague, because I think the visual aid is much more impactful than anything I'm going to say. Uh, but one thing I need to make you aware of if you're not as familiar, what's very important about this presentation from a legal perspective is a, is a Illinois law, federal law that deals with a law passed under Lady Bird Johnson and President Johnson's era. And essentially what it does, the best way to think of this is, it freezes what the land use was during that time. And so if September of 1959, a specific area of unincorporated towns were not zoned as commercial or industrial, it cannot 
have a billboard on it. There is both a city requirement, which would be in front of you, as well as a state requirement. So it is a two-part requirement. Um, Rob is gonna touch base on that and come to that portion after. There have been packets provided to each of you as well to help kind of guide you along. We're happy to answer any questions. Uh, and with that, I'm going to introduce Rob to Gordon. Thank you. Thank you all for the time. I truly do appreciate it. And um, part of this is I'm, I'm kind of a visual person myself, and hopefully most of you are as well, on behalf of Premier Media and our client, which is Prologis. I just wanted to show you a couple things, because the prior two meetings with CDC and with PZB, um, if you were to look at the actual text amendment that was brought to your attention, uh, one of the things, one of the pieces of feedback was proliferation. And what this text amendment does show in its black and white form is proliferation of billboards, which could be more than one. We assure you today, from what John had mentioned, we've got confirmation from IDOT that those other three locations that you've seen in the packet prior would not be able to have a billboard placed on them or an off-premise sign on them on Elgin O'Hare Expressway from the state. So in all intents and purposes, those other three uh, sites are, uh, are not applicable, if you will. And I know everybody is sensitive of time, but I think part of this is very much a visual because what I wanted to show you today is really an extension of this. If you can imagine what you have out on the Elgin O'Hare is your, essentially, your newsletter amplified on a digital display that talks about all of these items that you have in here in terms of some of the things here which are the kids' summer camp, bringing attention to that, bringing attention to the accolades from your um, bike with cops, <coughs> and your Memorial Day parades. Essentially, what I'm about to show you is a visual of what is not a billboard and what we intend on building if afforded the opportunity to do so on only one piece of property within the city. Think an extension of your clock tower, right? Very prideful installation that was done here. That clock tower shows community information, right? On four sides, it shows that community information. Very powerful, right? What we'd able to do is build a sign, a digital installation that has the city of Wooddale municipal seal identification to differentiate itself between Bensonville and the neighboring municipalities, but also it becomes your board, just like the tower, just like the clock tower, okay? 100% of the design and engineering would be incurred by would be incurred by us. There'd be no dollars outlaid from a municipal standpoint for the building and erection of this. Essentially, this becomes a public address system board. And I did just want to make attention to the landowner itself, Prologis. Prologis does employ about 160 local community members and pays about 415,000 in annual taxes across the two properties they have just along the Elgin O'Hare Expressway. So in terms of good community stewardship, good community partnership, this would be a true partnership with the city of Wooddale and Prologis in this installation. I did want to bring attention to one other thing too because this is not glorified in the packet in the text amendment. Should there be a desire, and hopefully there is, to move forward with one installation within a municipality, what we do across the country is we create development agreements with the municipalities. That development agreement also includes a very substantial financial impact as well. That financial impact can also help the city in other areas of the city, be it parks and recs, be it road and pavement improvements. In a sense, Prologis, the community partner that we just mentioned, would like to contribute 40% of the annual rent to the city. So on an annual basis, think of us as the builder right, to build the sign. That sign generates revenue off of outside advertisements, local advertisements, regional advertisements. 40% of that revenue would come back into the city, okay? This is what it would look like. We would offer a $20,000 one-time impact fee to the municipality, okay, for this year, because we know times have been tough in 2020, and also that money could be spent in very good ways. But over the next 20 years, over the next 20 years. That board that you also have that free communication on is also very different than the clock tower because the clock tower doesn't in a sense bring revenue into the municipality, this would. So about $18,000 a year for the next 20 years would also be something that the city would be able to benefit from with this installation. With an installation that has the look and feel 
of a clock tower, 35 feet tall, tall approximately, but have a unique, unique aesthetic to it. What we build throughout the country is not billboards. I want to make that crystal clear. We don't build traditional billboards. We do, but we don't like to. We like to take what we think, and everybody's head in this room, what a traditional billboard is, and we put an amplified aesthetic to it. Beautiful landscape, sometimes <coughs> water features, water fountains. Right? We make our signs look like welcoming and gateway features in the municipality. And this is what you're seeing now along the Elgin. Right? As you're coming into the municipality, you see Itasca, you see their branding on the water tower, you see the top golf, you see some industrial. But what you also have is you also have a billboard within the town, within the city rather. You have a billboard. And you know what's on that billboard right now? And I encourage you guys to drive by on North Wooddale. You know what's on there right now? It's a static. What's on there is COVID-19 rapid testing. One stationary sign face is bringing attention to COVID-19 rapid testing. Could you imagine if that one time slot that the city had, you had the ability to talk about, and by the way, that's pretty outdated. We all know where we are right now with vaccines. Perhaps talking about the vaccines, perhaps talking about your Memorial Day coming up, perhaps talking about something else that could benefit the community and health and safety. That changes every 10 seconds. That could be your board. It doesn't have to just sit there on a piece of canvas to say we have rapid testing happening. Right, that's there, and this is this would be our property. I do want to. I'll be super quick here because this is really important. This is really important from a residential standpoint. You wouldn't be able to see this. You certainly wouldn't be able to see this. This would be along the highway, and we've actually gone out and taken pictures to make sure that you wouldn't be able to see this. So we always, always right make sure that there's the ability to be able to not see this from a residential impact standpoint as well. We're very, very cognizant of all of our builds. Okay, and this is more conducive, right? But this is your sign, more on a local roadway. That's conducive to the local roadway. What's conducive out for the Elgin O'Hare is something more traditional like a billboard, but that's, that doesn't look, breathe, act, smell like a billboard. And super quick, and I promise I'll stop, is every time that we look at the design to make this thing look different, 100% unique, we bring in the natural surrounding. We bring in what the overpasses are doing. We bring in the elements of the text to show you what we can build. And I only have a few designs and then I'll stop. I just wanted to show you if we were afforded the opportunity to do one sign, and only one sign with the improvement of this text amendment. This sign could have features all the way down to the prints that are on the side of the little leaf on the side of your over and underpasses down to the, to the pantones of the colors of the under and overpasses. The city of Wooddale is loud and proud. That will be lit at night. Internally illuminated Lexan is what it's called. That can be programmed from dusk till dawn. Municipal seal at the top. And this, this is yours. This is yours. You control that. You control what goes up there. You control what message you want to talk to your community about. Something a little bit more abstract? OK, fine. Sure, we can do that. A little bit more creative with the steel, but again, the city of Wooddale, loud and proud. More traditional, okay, brickwork. Lantern adorning the top, that could be something that's unique. Lastly, we never know who we're in front of. We never know in this room if there's somebody a little bit more artistic, a little bit more abstract from a design standpoint. We welcome that. We work with municipalities on designing exactly what we want this thing to look like. I think this is a bit crazy, but I want to throw that out there anyway. And lastly, something more traditional. You're more Main Street or you're more Clock Tower. This is what, oh, also too, perhaps you can play with you know, uh, the airport uh, with some of the aesthetics that are right down the street from the airport. So something like this, here's the exact location. Welcoming community members and visitors alike by seeing something like this coming in off the Elgin O'Hare, bringing attention to. And one more thing I just want to mention, here's a prime example of that. Wooddale Dollars program, right? You guys spent a lot of time with that, and I hope that's working out really, really well. The program is to provide financial assistance and drive customer traffic to local businesses. I know that's done figuratively, but literally, a sign like this out in the Elgin, one sign, that could bring attention to local businesses. This is more of an economic development play than it is anything. It's got financial impact. It's got aesthetic prowess, I would say, that's differentiated and it has a communication benefit that mirrors exactly what everybody spends a lot of time on. So again, I, we didn't have the opportunity at PZB to kind of go into this a little bit more, but I did just want to make sure and thank you 
really truly thank you for the time to see this and hopefully share with you that this is different than just a text amendment for a billboard. We wouldn't build a billboard. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. So thank you, Mayor. I have uh, one, one report, and uh, that is an ordinance amending the city sign code regulations in Chapter 13 of the city code to permit off-premise signs, billboards, in the city, uh, within the city limits. And I'll start by making that a uh, motion to uh, approve. Second. Are there any questions? Mike, Alderman uh, Smarsky. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. You're going to battle over it? You're going to control over it? Or? Go ahead. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Permission from both? Uh, is this limiting the amount of uh, <clears throat> boards that can go up, or is this just a open, you know, op open chapter or open city code permit? I mean, are we going to allow 20 of them up and down the highway? Are we going to limit it to one, two, three? Well, as you are aware, when there's a text amendment, it applies to any other properties that may fit that criteria. I think staff evaluated there are four other uh, properties that it would be suitable under the criteria set forth in the text amendment. But it's not, you're not, it's not like some of the relief that comes before you where it's property specific. Um, this is a, a text amendment it applies across the board. So, uh, so that means that uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, we can have the choice of saying yes or no to the next customer. If we say yes today, no, the next person comes by, do you have a right to the denial? If, that's what I want to know. If you make a text amendment, Mr. Bond, you, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, as the mayor indicated, if you make the text amendment, anybody who satisfies that criteria would be uh, allowed or entitled to uh, sign by right. Any other questions? No. Alderman Jacob? A couple questions on the presentations. So, Pat. So they had said that the other three could not put up signs, and we're saying they can. So can they or can't they? I'm a little confused on that issue. Mr. Bond. Yeah, staff had done an, an analysis based on the text amendment, and that they saw, said there could signs could potentially be installed in four other locations. One of them was 300 Bowman Court, uh, 1221 North Middle Boulevard, 940 North Central, and 950 uh, uh, North Route 83. That was based on uh, applying the criteria in the text amendment to uh, the other properties that were within the uh, within that district. Follow up. Go yeah. ahead. But I mean, again, on what they're saying that they can't. So what is what's the state that they're talking about that law that says that this is the only place that could do it? <coughs> what what is that that law? Well, I mean, I could get into all the details of it, but there are certain protections that are out there for uh, for those, and, and as he indicated, it was President Johnson did. Uh, a very comprehensive uh, billboard and uh, legislation. Uh, but right, right now, with the text amendment, as it, and, and, and I think staff and perhaps the, uh, uh, the proposer has a different interpretation, but staff did the analysis based on the text amendment language and made a determination that there were other properties that fit the criteria where it would be allowed or eligible for a billboard science or these types of signs if they so desire. And and just to follow up on that, so if there's anybody up and down that road that's assembling property or whatnot on, on 390 or 83, those, once you make that text amendment, that's what it is. Follow up or all them, go ahead, Alderman Chief. Yeah, again, this is all legal stuff, but they had said the state of Illinois would not allow those other three. Is that correct or not? I mean, well, do you know or? Yeah, I mean, all, all of them are Go ahead, subject, Mr. Bond. Yeah, I'm sorry. All of them are subject to the state of Illinois uh, regulations because ultimately they need to get authorization from uh, the, the criteria from the state as well. Whether they, they can or can't, I, that, I can't speak to that. So it's a, it would require that approval as well. Chairman has a question, Mayor. Well, I'm in Catalano. Was yeah, so uh, yeah. Irvin Park Road, so it won't affect that. I mean, that's Route 19. That's the state, um, state of Illinois uh, highway. I mean, this, uh, Mr. Bond, does that affect uh, only the highway or what the state? Text uh, amendment. The text amendment. Well, this, this would be any, any, and you'd have to get into the specifics, any property that satisfies that criteria would be eligible under our local regulations of those will be eligible for 
a, a sign to be uh, to be placed there. There's limits of you know one sign per per lot and so forth. But any parcels that it would fit that criteria would be entitled to have a sign subject to any other regulatory uh, restrictions. So follow up. Go ahead. So my question is: Will it affect Irving Park Road? Again, if it meets the criteria, is what I'm understanding. If if somebody assembles <coughs> assembles property and they meet the criteria, perhaps. Right, and I'm just going to see if I can find but the state. But that's a uh, legal question. It, it right. is, and, and it goes toward the uh, the state has the has a regulatory authority over that on those state uh, highways. So that would be Route 83, Irving Park Road, uh, and then there's some regulatory restrictions on uh, 390. Alderman Woods. Thank you. Uh, first, and I don't know if this is probably a question for the applicants. So given, given all the, sure, go ahead. Given uh, all the issues uh, that have brought up, and I'll make the statement of uh, we're not here to pre-litigate any. We, we understand. We figure we might be able to help it. Hold on one second. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. But, uh, why didn't you just apply for, since it's a single use, a special use? versus the text amendment. Alderman, that Go is, ahead. No, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, that option is not available because there is a strict prohibition in your sign code. Um, so legally we would have to cause this to be changed. Um, one thing I do want to point out, again, if I can just go back to the beginning, it requires both city approval and state approval. Uh, the planner and the CDC here only looked at what the city would allow. So although, yes, there are four sites that are eligible, per our testimony, which was given under oath at CDC, only one of them is 1959 compliant, which is ours. It is maxed, the way this is written, it is a max of three locations. They must be 500 feet apart. They must be in the I-1 industrial corridor. They must be within a certain amount of feet of 390. So this is narrowly tailored to avoid a potential spot zoning litigation that someone else might try, or at the same time, make sure that you don't have proliferation since that was the number one concern voiced in CDC. There cannot be more based on this text ordinance than, or the text amendment than three. And on top of that, the other three are not 1959 compliant. So we couldn't, unfortunately, the logistics and the legalities prevent us from doing what would be similar to a variance maybe or something if, if that's what you're thinking of. Uh, we're not afforded that opportunity. We wish we were. And we would gladly have proceeded in that manner. All right, thank Follow you. Up. Go ahead. No, no, I'm good. Any other questions? Yes. Okay, we, some Alderman Jacob? Yeah, um, so you guys talk about the city advertising. This is a business that's putting this sign up, correct? Correct. Go ahead, Mr. Simpson. Sorry. But so the way the digital screens would work is every 10 seconds, think of it as a playlist, there's an opportunity to put a message up there. The city would be afforded one slot on that side. So that means essentially once a minute, every minute, 365 days a year, the city is able to communicate whatever you want, whenever you want. So that's very powerful. If you want to talk about the Memorial Day Parade in the afternoon and switch it to something in the afternoon, in the evening hours, you can. It's unlimited, it becomes your board. And by the way, the content, the creation, don't feel like there has to be a staffer that you have to hire and pay. We will help the staffer create that content and put it up there, right? So if there's a message you want to communicate, it goes to your, it's your communication platform. And it's only for the Elgin O'Hare. It doesn't affect any other part of the municipality. And only one would be allowed by the state. Think of it from this point, it's it, in a weird way. It's from this property West, no good. From an annexation standpoint, we looked into it. We looked into, trust me, many, many, many a property. No, the state won't allow. From this property west, no. From this property east, yeah. But guess where the municipal boundary line is? Guess where you want to put this? Welcome to Wooddale, right near the municipal boundary line. And that's the one spot. So this would only allow one. There would be no proliferation. It's like one clock tower in the center of town. You wouldn't put five clock towers throughout town. Think of it that way. Mayor, follow up. Follow up. Go ahead, Alderman Jacob. Yeah. So, and who else is going to be advertising on here? Any business could pay to advertise on here? Or is it just um, Prologis? 
Um, who's going to take this, Mr. DeGarrio? Sure. From an advertising standpoint, so the remaining uh, five slots would be for local and regional advertising. So think a local community development play. About 80% to 82% of the local businesses on the board will use that platform. Your local restaurants, your local lawyers, your local dentists, your local doctors, veterinarians, they will use that board. That board could say X, Y, Z business, turn off the exit into the center of town. It's an economic development play more than anything. About 80% of our clients are local and regional. We have teams that go and literally knock doors in the local municipalities. So you won't see Mer Mercedes-Benz USA. It's not a billboard. It, it, it acts different than that. We run it different than that, and it acts different than that. There's a community sense to this as well that's very different. Mayor. Alder Messina. I had an interesting experience uh, when I was traveling, so I thought about this scenario. Um, who manages your digital messaging content? And what restrictions would there be if we were to allow this? Go so, ahead, Mr. DeGarry. So, yes. so, so Premier Media, as the developer, has a lease agreement with Prologis. In that lease agreement, there are language that says no pornography, no, no uh, questionable content, there is very strict guidelines in terms of what you could. And if there is so somehow, some way, there's a quick, there's a quick intraday turnaround to get that off. It's not, the, f the firewalls are there because we control that, right? So the advertising clients control, uh, come to us to see if you want to be on the board. We'll determine if, if that contract is okay to put that up on the board. But from a legality standpoint, you, no pornography, no questionable content, the barriers are there for that. Follow up. Go ahead, follow up. So Prologis is the developer, let's call them, or the owner, right? But there would be tenants, right? And um, final say on what they would put. So would, who, who has final say, Prologis or you, or you folks? We would. We would. So yeah. think of it as a, as a three-party collaboration. You have the landowner, which is Prologis, which is simply just allowing us. By the way, we're Prologis' national sign consultant. So they have 5,600 properties throughout the United States. And we've been charged, we come into work every single day, and we look at a spreadsheet of 5,600 properties. And we go around the country and we build off-premise signage for them. Sometimes we make them look nice if it's warranted. Other times, like on a super highway where there's not this kind of aesthetic need, it's a traditional billboard, right? So the, all we are is we have the lease with Prologis, and those lease ha that lease has those barriers, those, those protections in it. The community element is far different. The community element is between us Premier Media, and the city of Wooddale. So giving up one slot pro bono back to the city for the city's use is our way of saying, okay, this is a community board, right? You have a free spot that no one's going to make money on. That's your spot that you can use whenever you want. One more thing, aesthetically, it costs about $250,000 to build a billboard, that rusted billboard that's out there on North Wooddale is been there grandfathered for years and years, right? About 250, at the time it probably cost about 50 or $60,000 to build. We spent every bit of $750,000 on each one of our signs to build them aesthetically, right? To put the cladding on there. To, your, some municipalities create subcommittees, design subcommittees for us. And those design subcommittees will tell us that the type of brickwork that you use on the outside of this very building is the same brickwork you want to use on that sign. Your municipal seal better look like your municipal seal on the base of that sign. And let's not forget, that side road of Thorndale right there, that's a municipal road. That's a, that's a local road. So your municipal seal that's there would be loud and proud for those local traffic that's there as well. Right? So it ends up being something that's conducive to that environment. But the aesthetics is all up to you. You tell us what you want it to look like. We throw three or four different, these were just for sake of conversation. You design the board, you tell us what you want it to look like. We'll have design meetings. We'll come up with it collaboratively. The, the financial aspect is just a bonus. The financial aspect's a bonus. We don't have to do that, technically. It, you, you, it's crystal clear, you never asked us to do that and we don't have to do that. But aesthetically, financial component and a communication platform. That's why these things don't act. We call them community landmark signs. They're trademarked. We have a trademark. The community landmark sign. Even though this <coughs> ordinance tonight 
And if there's questions about it being passed, I, I encourage you perhaps not even to vote on that. I encourage you to perhaps allow us to make those tweaks. Allow us to write in that this, if you're gonna build this, it has to have <coughs> this type of aesthetic. It has to allow the municipality one message per six slots. Allow us the opportunity to bake that stuff back in. We were simply just following the process to see if we can build a structure there to your liking. Follow up, go ahead, Alder Messina. So on page four, the uh, terms of the lease, is that what we would be approving tonight? This might be a question for the attorney, or is that just um, some proposed numbers? So we, go ahead, Mr. From a, from a landowner and lease perspective, we have two different types of situations we run in throughout the country. Sometimes the land is owned by the municipality that we work with, right? The non-prologists, we have two tranches of the business. One tranche is working with prologists strictly throughout the country, right? Private party, landowner, here we are, right? The other side of our business is going in and talking to a municipality directly and saying, oh, you own that parkland along the Elgin, o o o Elgin O'Hare Expressway, that baseball field? How about we build a structure that provides you, so the lease is between us and you. So we come up with a 25-year lease, a 99-year lease. In this instance, it can't be with you, because A, you don't own the land along the Elgin, and B, this is a site-specific ordinance for Prologis. Prologis is being a good community partner by kicking back or sharing 40% of that base rent. So our rent to Prologis is 40% less. Right? They're, taking, they're, they're taking a hit on their rent to share back with their community as a good community steward. That's why this becomes a community project, not a, not a stick <coughs> in the ground with a TV on it. Can I have a follow-up? Go ahead, follow-up. Um, I'm looking at it from a greedy perspective, sure. right? So we all know the development that's happening. I mean, there's no secret here, right? So I look at these numbers and I, would, I personally wouldn't be in favor of a lease this long, right? Knowing what's coming knowing the Western access, right? So to me, like you said, maybe we don't vote on it today, but for me to approve this, I, I'm, I'm looking at a five-year lease if that, you know, we don't know what's coming. We know a lot's coming, right? So I wouldn't, wouldn't want to lock our city into something like 20 years. It just would not make financial sense. Even if it's a kickback, whatever you guys want to call it, structured deals for a living, right? you can call it a kickback, you can call it a partial split. I mean, that's fine, but what I, I guess the point is, that to me is a risk that I, I personally wouldn't want to take. We would gladly do Good. that for one or two years. We're, yeah. we're trying to help you for 20 years in that. Yeah, regard. yeah. yeah. Well, it, Go ahead, Mr. Stimson, you want to say th something? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Alderman, one thing to note is um, just a reminder of the rules. If we are not approved today, we are barred for a year, so that is why we, you know, we're, we're confident, we're hopeful in being a good partner. We just want to remind everyone if, if it's possible, if this is something that you would like more details on or additional items added, we're all for that, but we'd, we'd ask that you provide leave and allow this to be tabled right. um, to a later date so that we can make those adjustments. Unfortunately, this is the first time due to COVID we've had the opportunity to actually make this presentation to you, right. and we only had four out of the seven CDC members due to COVID as well. So. I know this seems new and we understand that there are some items that might want to be addressed. Please note that that is our, you know, we we're had, happy to do that. We had the biggest compliment, we had the biggest compliment in CDC. I know that you, you saw the three to one vote, but the gentleman, I can't remember his name. He said, these are not my grandfather's signs. That was the biggest compliment we got. What, what I took from that, and he was trying to communicate as he looked over down the road, he was trying to communicate to his other peers that guys, what they're trying to build is very different than what we've ever seen. They're gonna pass, they're gonna give us free communication, and they're gonna make it look good. This is not my grandfather's signs, right? It was, a very, it was a very nice compliment. But to your point, if there's an opportunity, because unfortunately we didn't get to at PZB, if there's an opportunity to bake more stuff in here that gives you guys the comfort knowing that this thing is going to build, be built with aesthetics, that, that we are, so, we're not gonna jam a billboard at that site because you approved it tonight. We, that's not what we want hey, Mayor, to do. Hey, Mayor, can be recognized? Go ahead, Alder Messina. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to, well, I'd like to ask the motioner to amend his motion to table this so that we can look for, get some additional details. I'll amend the motion if the seconder agrees. Yes. Okay, so there's a, the motion's been changed to a table. That's correct? Correct. correct. Any other questions? 
All right, let's get a roll call on that. Alderman Woods? Yes. Alderman Sismarski? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Curielli? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Ames? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Okay. Yes. Okay. That's tabled. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, and that's the uh, end of my report, Mayor. Thank you. Sadly. <laughs> Next, public health and safety, Alderman Sismarski. No reform, Mayor. Thank you. Public works, Alderman Messina. Three reports, Mayor. Go ahead. Uh, resolution approving an agreement between the City of Wooddale and Williams Architects for the public works facility improvements in an amount not to exceed $962,500. A second, a... Is that your motion? That is my motion. Second. second. Alderman Jacob, second. Okay. Point of, point of order on the motion, Your Honor. If, uh, if Go ahead. you make that, there's a number of things that are, are looking. We're working with staff uh, and uh, legal. If that attorney was review? To uh, uh, final uh, attorney review, okay. staff and attorney review, if it's acceptable to move it. Alderman Messina? Yeah, that is yep, acceptable. Alderman Jacob, you were second? Yeah. Okay, any questions on this one? Roll call. Alderman Woods? Yes. Alderman Sismarski? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Carriella? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Ames? Yes. Okay, and that passed. Second report. Uh, tied to the first, but a resolution uh, approving an agreement between the City of Wooddale and FQC Construction Management for the Public Works Facility improvements in an amount not to exceed $821,855. So moved. Subject to attorney Sub approval. Subject to attorney approval. So moved. Okay, you making the motion? Second, do I have a second? Yes. Second. Any questions on this one? Roll call. Alderman Woods? Yes. Alderman Sismarski? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me, Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Curielli? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Ames? Yes. <clears throat> right. Okay, and that passes. Third report, a resolution approving an agreement between the City of Wooddale and Benchmark Construction for the Ward 2 and 3 Stormwater Improvement Project contractee in an amount not to exceed $5,338,033.40, subject to attorney review and approval. Is that your motion? That would be my motion. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any questions on this one? Roll call, please. Alderman Woods? Yes. Alderman Sisnarski? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Curielli? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. And Alderman Gibbs? Yes. That and concludes that my report. Excuse me, sorry. That concludes my report, Mayor. <clears throat> Thank you. Finance and Administration, Alderman Catalano? Yes, I have one. Um, make a motion of a list of bills for May 20th, 2021. No, no, no. Go ahead. Here. Committee. Finance committee. Oh, report. No, no report. report. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. You're trying, to, you're trying to get out of here. Yeah. Kind of. Don't worry. We still got a couple more things. <coughs> All right. No report. Thank you. Under other business, airport noise, Alderman Jacob? No report, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, under Stormwater Commission, there's no report. Uh, approval list of bills, Alderman Catalano? Yes. Yeah, I'll make a motion of the list of bills for May 20th, 2021, in the amount of $818,767.45. So moved. Okay, we have There's a motion, motion and a second. Alderman Mr. Smarks, you second. Any questions on the bills? Alderman Kevin? Yeah, I have a, can we have the breakdown on the, um, the, uh, the, the Wooddale dollars, the, the amounts that went to uh, the, um, the water bill and the... Uh, the you have that handy, Mr. We Wilson? Those in the manager's newsletter, was it? Ray, it was. So the, the, at least I, the residents will... I think he just wants it for the residents. Oh. Do, we, do we have that, guys? Somebody? You have your manager report on you, don't you? Uh, <laughs> I don't wow. either. I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. Uh, we, we'll, we'll give okay. it on the next meeting. Okay? No problem. We'll Thank you. We'll give you an update. I, I know I saw it. I didn't want to guess. Alderman Jacob, go ahead. 
I have three questions. Sure. Um, uh, check number 13062 for Christopher Burke Engineering Traffic Warrant Study, Illinois Route 83. What was that study for? And where was that at? It's for this street light, Mr. Mermis. That was the referenced potential new street light for the um, industrial development that's Bryn been going Ars, on. Bryn Mawr and Urban and okay. um, Yeah, next, next question, um, and, and this might just be kind of a, the Wooddale Historical Society, the 7,000, I know we, every year we give them a certain amount and didn't they come back to us asking for more? Does this include, is this what we give them normally or? Is no. This is what we give them normally. Okay, so this is not. That's a, not. No. Uh, okay. And then one other question. Um, Go ahead. Time limit. Yeah. Uh, this man, uh, may, uh, superior ground service uh, landscaping city maintenance package. What's is that? Is that for them Who's taking care take of the it? one of our properties? Or I believe that's, that's the firm that specializes in our clock tower landscaping. Right. We've been working with them for a number of years, um, so that is that firm. Okay. Is that is that, is that for the, is that for the year, or is that every time they maintenance it? Mr. Or? Lane. Monthly, and then they also do the area around the clock tower and the beddings on uh, Wooddale Road and Irving Park Road. And Irving Park. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, roll call, please. Alton Woods? Uh, yes. Alderman Sosmarski? Yes. Alderman Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Curio? Yes. Alderman Ames? Yes. Okay, and that passes. And that's the end of my report, Mayor. Thank you. We have no executive session, no items to be referred. I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned.